Hi everyone and welcome back to Sonia's Prep and to another edition of Shabbat Meal Prep. I'm so happy you guys tuned in and I can't wait to show you what we're making today. Before we get started, I just wanted to share with you this really cute apron that my husband got for me with my uh, channel name. I was so excited to get it. I wanted something cute and customized and he was able to find this really amazing website called Crazy Aprons and they really hooked it up. I really loved how they designed it and it can totally be customized. And they actually found out that I had a channel and they sent me some more stuff and I wanted to open it up with you today. So let's see what I got. How cute is this? I got a white one and a little mixer. So you could basically tell her like what kind of font you want and what kind of like logos you have if you want to include them as well. And also, let's see, this one. Also with a mixer, really, really cute. And she was so nice to give me a coupon code to share with all of my subscribers. So when you attend, I'll have the website linked down below as well as the coupon code that you can use for yourself if you're looking for a really cute customized apron or to gift to somebody. She has even like a holiday section I saw for Rosh Hashanah and she's very nice and she, she customizes everything beautifully. So check her out let me know how you guys like it. Now let's get started with cooking for Shabbat. To start off, I'll be sharing with you how I make my roasted vegetables in the oven. I cut up my sweet potatoes, zucchinis, and eggplants in half. I also have some sliced lemons and garlic on the baking tray, and I use any seasonings that I would normally like, like salt and pepper, cilantro, some adobo seasoning, garlic powder, and I mix all of that in with some vegetable oil and baste that all over the vegetables. I flip the sweet potatoes over cut side down so that they don't dry out while they're cooking. I place it into a preheated 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes. And this is how it turns out. To fry my flounder, I place an egg into a plate Season it with some salt, pepper, garlic powder, and paprika. Place the flounder first into the flour and then into the egg mixture and fry it on both sides until nice and golden. Here I have some wild caught salmon that I'm going to be seasoning with some salt and some grilled fish seasoning over the top and drizzling in some vegetable oil over it. I bake it on broil for 15 minutes.
Next up is the recipe for my flanken. I use oil, onion powder, pepper, salt, garlic powder, paprika, and kebab spice, and some steak seasoning. I drizzle over some vegetable oil on top of the flanken and then spice it all up with any spices that I normally like. So you could use things that you would normally put on your meat and it'll turn out just great. I cover the flanken up with some tin foil and place it in a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Next up, I'll be sharing with you how I make my roast chicken with vegetables. I season the chicken with some salt, pepper, and paprika, garlic powder. Rub everything in very well into the chicken. I place it onto a hot skillet and fry up both sides. I used about one tablespoon of oil just to get the chicken not to stick to the pan. Separately, I've sliced up some vegetables. I have some quartered onions, some sliced up tomatoes, some baby potatoes some baby carrots and some celery that i have sliced up once the chicken is browned on both sides i remove them from the pan and put them on a baking tray and those are all the juices that came out of the chicken i didn't add any water i then place all of the vegetables in the pan saute that for about five minutes i add in some dried cilantro half of a small container of tomato sauce and transfer them to the foil pan to finish baking in the oven. I cover the tray with foil and bake it in a 400 degree oven covered for one hour. I then uncover it and cook it for another additional hour. This is breast of veal. I love making this when I'm hosting. It's very easy to make. I just put tons of spices over it. It's important to season this heavily because the meat is very thick. So I just use salt, pepper, garlic powder, cumin, coriander, seasoning salt, anything you really like. I rub that all together with some oil and bake it in a 400 degree oven for 3 hours. I also like making this because whenever I have any leftovers, I just slice them up like cold cuts and serve it on the next day for lunch. Next up, I'll be showing you how I make my madbucha. I use three large tomatoes, one green pepper, and a few cloves of garlic. So to start off into a skillet, I place about four to five tablespoons of oil, add in my peppers inside. You could also use like jalapenos or habaneros, whatever you like. And I add in some salt, pepper, cumin, coriander, paprika, hot paprika as well mix everything really well get all the spices and aromas going and after the peppers start to soften a little bit 
I add in my sliced garlic cloves that I've sliced up. And I finish everything off by adding in the sliced tomatoes. I let that come to a boil and cook for about 30 minutes until it looks something like this. I also made baksh, it's a green rice that I made so many times here on my channel. It's basically 3 cups of rice, 4 bunches of cilantro, 1 dill, 1 onion, cubed up, um, diced up meat, I use lamb usually some salt, pepper, con chicken consomme seasoning, some turmeric, half a cup of oil, and you just mix everything together and place in a linen cloth bag that's going to be basically steamed in a double boiler. I'll have a link to a video that I've made showing exactly how I made this dish in the description box below. Here I'll be showing you how I make my madbucha salmon using the madbucha that we just made. I add in some salt, some fish seasoning over the top of the salmon, some teriyaki marinade that I drizzle right over the top, and then add in a few heaping tablespoons of the madbucha that we just made. I bake the fish covered at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes, and then I uncover it and leave it in there for an additional 10 minutes. Using a food processor, I'll show you how I make my osvo, which is a meal that we eat on Saturday for lunchtime. I food process one tomato, a carrot, and one onion, as well as an apple in a food processor. In a non-stick pot, I add in some marrow bones or lamb bones with a little bit of oil. I add in the food processed vegetables and the apple that I have just processed. Add in half of a container of a large tomato sauce or you could just use a small tomato sauce can. One tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of chicken consomme seasoning. Mix everything really well and I add in two cups of rice that I have washed very well as well and add in four cups of water
Next up is the deli roll. I roll out puff pastry dough to make everything even and uniform. Add in some mustard over the top, smear everything all together, add in all the delis that I want. You could either use one or mix it up with two different kinds and I braid everything all together. Once everything is braided, I egg wash the top of it, sprinkle on some sesame seeds, and bake it at a 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. At this point, the chicken and flanken have finished cooking. I'm uncovering the chicken and placing it back into the oven to crispen up. To the flank and I'm going to be adding in a sprinkle of dark brown sugar over the top as well as some general chow sauce and barbecue sauce. Mix that all in very well, cover it back up for another 20 minutes and place it back in the oven. While that's finishing cooking, I'm going to be starting on my salads. I will enjoy cooking with my kids. It's a nice bonding time and I love to get them started on this early on in their lives. So she's here chopping up some vegetables and I'm shredding up some beets and carrots for the salad. I'll have all of the recipes to these salads linked in the description box below. As we go along, I show her the proper way to cut the vegetables and she just continues on and this leaves her with a very big sense of accomplishment because she is mostly doing everything on her own. When making the salads, I like to shred or chop up everything in the beginning so that I can dress all of the salads all at once. So here you see that I have shredded up the carrots and the beets for that salad and I'm moving on to the purple cabbage slaw. So I'm going to be shredding the purple cabbage, the carrots, the cucumbers and adding in greens.
Now that I finished chopping and slicing everything up, I'm going to be dividing up the greens into all the salads that I have just made. I squeeze in half a lemon into the purple cabbage slaw and another half a lemon into the beet salad. Separately, I saute half of a purple onion so I could place it on top of the carrot and beet salad. I love making boy john. It's a roasted eggplant salad that is made on an open fire. So I take an eggplant, wrap it in some tin foil and place it on an open fire. I don't have a gas stove in the house. I have an electric one. So I do this outside in my backyard. I turn the eggplant every few minutes until everything is nice and soft inside. I scoop all of the insides out into a container, add in some salt and garlic and give everything a very good mix. To get the eggplant salad nice and smooth, I place it on a cutting board and use this knife motion to smooth everything out. Alternatively, you can place it into a food processor and process it until smooth. Now that the onions have finished sauteing, I'm adding in some garlic cloves into the beet salad, some salt and pepper, placing in some vinegar, as well as those onions that have finished sauteing. I'm giving everything a good mix. To the purple cabbage slaw, I added in a few cloves of garlic, some mayo, salt and pepper and giving that a good mix as well. When mixing this kind of cabbage salad, I'm careful to not put too much pressure on the cabbage or any of the ingredients in the salad so that it remains crunchy and remains fresh looking. This is the potato salad that you saw my daughter Miriam making earlier and I'm very proud of her. It came out really super delicious and I just mix it with some mayo, salt and pepper and dill. To the tuna salad, I added in two hard boiled eggs and a stalk of celery that I have cubed up. Mix it with some salt and pepper and mayo. Last but not least is this avocado salad that I place in a clove of garlic that I've minced and some lemon juice. About a teaspoon of mayo and I mix that very well.
everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these recipes and try them out in your kitchen for your family and friends. Again, don't forget to check out Crazy Aprons for all her cool aprons that she has on her website. And I wanted to wish you all a Shabbat Shalom from my family to yours. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Bye.